Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Testing CTCSS and DCS with Rodian Schwartz CMA 180. In this short presentation, we'll show you how to perform basic CTCSS and DCS transmit and receive tests using the Rodian Schwartz CMA 180 radio test set. This presentation assumes a basic familiarity with CTCSS and DCS. If you're not familiar with CTCSS or DCS, or if you need a refresher, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding CTCSS and DCS before beginning this presentation. There are two basic types of CTCSS or DCS testing, receive and transmit. In receive tests, the goal is to ensure that the radio opens squelch when the configured CTCSS tone, or DCS code, is present in the received signal. In transmit tests, we want to verify that the radio under test is transmitting the correct CTCSS tone, or DCS code. Both of these tests can be easily configured on the CMA180, and in this presentation, we'll walk through the test procedures for both types of tests using both CTCSS and DCS. Depending on our test type, we have to make either one or two connections from our radio to the CMA180. Both transmit and receive tests require a connection between RFCOM and the antenna connector on the radio. This connection carries the modulated RF signal. The second connection is from the audio out of the radio to AF1 in on the CMA180. This connection is only required for receive tests and carries the demodulated audio signal from the radio back into the CMA180 for analysis. The CMA180 audio frequency inputs are BNC connectors, so it's likely that a special cable or adapter will be needed to interface with the receiver's audio output, for example, a BNC to 3.5 millimeter cable. Once the radio is connected, it should be tuned to the desired frequency, and audio output should be set to approximately mid-range. We'll also need to configure the radio with a desired CTCSS tone or DCS code. This can usually be done directly through the radio's user interface. We'll start with receive testing. The first step in receive testing is to transmit modulated RF from the CMA180 to the radio under test. In this example, we'll be using FM signal modulated with a 1000 Hz tone. With no CTCSS or DCS configured, the radio should output demodulated audio, which can then be monitored from the CMA. Either CTCSS or DCS can then be configured and enabled on both the CMA180 and on the radio under test. In this case, the radio should only output audio if the same CTCSS tone, or DCS code, is configured on both devices. Since we're testing the radio's receive, we'll be using the RX test mode. Under generator, we configure the frequency, mode, level, etc. to match the radio under test, and under AF, we configure the modulating signal, a 1000 Hz tone in this case. After starting the generator, we should be able to hear a 1000 Hz tone by enabling the audio monitor, assuming no CTCSS or DCS has been configured on the radio. In order to add CTCSS or DCS to the transmitted signal, we click on the Configure icon under the Generator tab. CTCSS tones are configured by going to Tones and then CTCSS. The desired tone frequency can be selected from the list of standard frequencies, and additional configuration parameters are also available. To add the CTCSS tone to the transmitted RF signal, choose Active CTCSS. If the radio under test does not have any CTCSS tone active, the 1000 Hz tone should still be audible. The audio should also be audible if the same tone, here 82.5 Hz, is configured and enabled on the radio. However, if the radio has a CTCSS tone configured and a different tone is inserted by the CMA180, then the radio should not produce any audio output. The procedure for inserting a DCS code is similar. Under Tones, choose the DCS tab. Then select the DCS code from the list of available codes. Since DCS is sent as FSK data, the FSK deviation can be specified, and inverted FSK can also be selected if necessary. The CMA180 can also send a turnoff code with a user-definable length. Once the parameters have been configured, Active DCS inserts the DCS code into the transmitted RF signal. And as with CTCSS, the radio under test should output audio only if the matching DCS code is configured on the radio under test, or if no DCS is configured or enabled on the radio. And if the DCS code configured on the radio does not match the code sent by the CMA180, then no audio output should be produced by the radio. 
A variant of the receive test is testing radios which have a so-called tone scan feature. This feature allows the radio to scan through all the possible CTCSS tones to determine which tone is in use. The test procedure is similar to the standard CTCSS receive test. The CMA180 is first configured to transmit a signal with a given CTCSS tone. The tone scan is started on the radio and the operator confirms that the radio detects, displays, or configures the CTCSS tone that's being sent by the CMA180. Now let's look at transmit tests. Remember that in this case, we want to verify that the radio is transmitting the correct CTCSS tone or DCS code, so no audio connection is required between the radio and the CMA. After configuring a CTCSS tone or DCS code on the radio, the radio then transmits a signal into the CMA180. The received radio frequency signal from the radio is then analyzed to make sure that the correct tone or code is being inserted into the transmitted signal. This analysis is done differently depending on whether we're using CTCSS or DCS. For CTCSS, which uses a subaudible tone, we verify the tone by doing an audio frequency analysis and looking for the presence of the tone at the expected frequency. For DCS, the CMA demodulates the FSK modulated digital code. We'll start with a CTCSS transmit test. Because we're testing the transmit of the radio under test, we'll use TX test mode. First, we need to configure the receive frequency, expected power, and the modulation type under Analyzer. We could also use the Find RF button to automatically search for and configure the parameters of the received signal after the radio begins transmitting. While RF is being received, go to the AF Spectrum tab to see the received audio spectrum. You may need to zoom in on the display to see the lower frequencies more clearly. Markers can then be used to verify the frequency of the received CTCSS tone. For analyzing the received DCS tone, we use the Dialing tab. Mode is set to DCS, and we can also specify if inverted modulation is being used. We need to enter the expected DCS code word as three octal digits. All of the standard codes and some non-standard codes are supported by the CMA180. When RF is received from the radio under test, the CMA180 will display the results under Modulation. This includes the last detected DCS code word, as well as the number of detected matches. In addition, the FSK deviation and bit error rate are also displayed. If a turnoff code is present, the length of this code is indicated as well. Zero means no detected turnoff code. Note that the demodulation requires slightly more than a second to complete, so be sure the transmissions from the radio under test are long enough to be analyzed by the CMA180. So in summary, there are two types of CTCSS or DCS tests. The first of these is a receive test, where we verify that a radio opens squelch when the correct CTCSS tone or DCS code is received. The second is a transmit test, where the radio frequency signal received from the radio is analyzed to check for the inserted tone or code. The CMA180 can be used for both types of testing. Receive testing is done by inserting a user-definable tone or code into the transmitted RF carrier. CTCSS receive testing involves an audio frequency analysis of the received signal in order to detect and measure the received analog tone, whereas DCS receive testing performs a digital demodulation of the received FSK data. This concludes our presentation, Testing CTCSS and DCS with a CMA180. If you'd like to learn more about CTCSS, DCS, the CMA180, or related test and measurement topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.